Nerd punch. In part one, we did the math and we came to the obvious answer to the question, will Master Chief sink in water? Yes, scary fast, but he won't die from drowning or being crushed by water pressure or running out of oxygen. So how will Master Chief die? Ironically, it's from his own air supply. Nitrogen narcosis symptoms start showing up after 50 to 100 feet deep in water. A rule divers colloquially refer to is the Martini Law. This law states that each 50 feet of descent in water is the equivalent of drinking one martini. Not only this, but oxygen also becomes toxic at around 200 feet deep. This is due to the higher pressures causing you to breathe more oxygen per breath than you would at the surface. At 200 feet, you're effectively breathing 150% oxygen. So let's say Master Chief crash landed in the ocean. In about four seconds, Master Chief would reach 100 feet deep. He would have the equivalent of two martinis in his system. John's not a lightweight, so he'll be fine at this depth. In about eight seconds, he would reach 200 feet of depth. Master Chief's no lightweight, but getting hit with four martinis in eight seconds isn't going to be a good trend to keep up. He's going to start getting really dizzy, have delayed responses to instructions and stimuli, impaired judgment, confusion, sleepiness, reduced dexterity. Lots of fun stuff you would encounter at a frat party. Not fun when you're 200 feet underwater. Not only this, but at 200 feet, he will also have to contend with oxygen toxicity. Shorter exposures at very high partial pressures will begin to cause oxidative damage to cell membranes, cause retinal damage, tunnel vision, nausea, confusion, dizziness, and tonic-clonic seizures. He's very quickly starting to have a really fucked up day. In 12 seconds, he would hit 300 feet of depth. Nitrogen narcosis and oxygen toxicity would be severely affecting him. Just with the nitrogen narcosis alone, he's had the equivalent of six martinis in 12 seconds. Also to keep in mind is that while these symptoms would typically take some time to show up in normal diving situations, what Master Chief is experiencing is an extremely rapid change in atmospheres while continuing to breathe compressed air. This is something divers wouldn't come close to at all. In fact, it would probably be considered suicidal in the diving world. John would start experiencing severe mental impairment, retinal detachment and blindness, convulsions, pulmonary failure, loss of consciousness, and would rapidly be approaching death for a wide variety of medical reasons. In 16 seconds and 400 feet deep, he would basically be on the verge of death. I know you're thinking, nerd punch. John is an augmented super soldier who isn't affected by these things as much as a mere mortal. Well, John is about as immune to oxygen toxicity as he is to being beheaded by a plasma sword. There's nothing you can do to prevent nitrogen narcosis and oxygen toxicity if you're breathing compressed air at these depths. The only way to get around this is if you switch to breathing gases that would have reduced proportions of nitrogen and oxygen, like helium, for example. Wonder what Chief would sound like on helium. Probably not as badass. This is Spartan 117. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? I think we're just getting started. In 20 seconds, or 500 feet, Master Chief, well, yeah, he's pretty dead. So in actuality, the games are still... Not very accurate, but Master Chief won't be drowning conventionally, as at this step, he would still have about six to nine minutes of somewhat breathable oxygen. He will be dying from organ and central nervous system failure, which does resemble what happens in the games. So, right, back on topic. Dr. Halsey in the Spartan program tasked us with water survivability of these suits. What can we do with modern technology to keep Spartans from drowning, sinking to their deaths, and all the other shit we just talked about? Floaties. Oh yeah, floaties. Master Chief would need about 30 baby floats, 15 toddler floats, 8 child floaties, 3 adult inflatable lounges, and about 1.46 inflatable unicorn party tubes. I'm sure they sell two for the price of one, and then Chief can bring like two girls with him to the resort pool. In all seriousness, yeah, we're serious here. What kind of life vest 
could we give him that supports his weight? A good real life example would be a life preserver unit worn by military pilots. It's lightweight, it's compact, and Master Chief would only need 12 of them. Not very sleek, but it would be effective. Here's the math. Master Chief has about 10% body fat and 70% water mass. 287 times 0.8 equals 230 pounds. So Chief weighs 57 pounds in water. With inflated lungs, John has a weight in water of about 30 pounds. So now add 700 pounds of super dense titanium gold alloy and you have a negative buoyancy of 730 pounds. Each of these life preserver units has a buoyancy of about 65 pounds. So 730 pounds divided by 65 pounds and you come out to about 12 of them. At first glance, this does not look very sleek. But the majority of the space this life vest takes up is due to the twin 35 gram CO2 cylinders for each unit. Master Chief doesn't really need these. Here's why. Master Chief might be able to use his 90 minutes of compressed air supply to inflate his life preserver. To confirm this, we need to know how much compressed air 90 minutes actually is. This depends on a lot of variables as well as how this number was achieved or calculated. So how much air is... 90 minutes of compressed air. We need to use a simple gas consumption formula. This is RMV times bar times time equals volume consumed. John's RMV at rest would be about 10. The depth of one bar or 33 feet of seawater times 90 minutes would equal about 900 liters of free air. 70 grams of CO2 is about 1.59 moles, and one mole of gas is about 22.4 liters, so 22.4 times 1.59 equals 35.62 liters of air. 12 vests times 35.62 liters of air for one vest equals 427 liters. So, yes, Master Chief could fill two of these gigantic life vests with his integrated compressed air supply. Life vests are great for floating and surviving, but floating isn't really the concern though, as Navy SEALs don't float to their target. But you do need some buoyancy so you don't sink to the bottom of the ocean. A solution would be to use the above life preserver setup as more of a buoyancy control device. This is a piece of diving equipment with an inflatable bladder which is worn by scuba divers to establish positive, neutral, or negative buoyancy as needed. This is the key. This is how we make Master Chief and Spartans a viable option for maritime operations. But let's take a second and address a question I've gotten a lot. Does he need any buoyancy? Couldn't he just walk on the bottom of the ocean or a river? Well, I think by now we've established that the depth of the ocean wouldn't really be conducive to survival. The deepest part of the ocean is called Challenger Deep. Challenger Deep is approximately 36,200 feet deep, and the average depth of the ocean in general is about 12,100 feet deep. How long would it take Master Chief to sink to the deepest part of the ocean? Well, 36,200 feet divided by 26 feet per second, and you get about 1,392 seconds divided by 60 seconds for a minute. So Master Chief would sink to the deepest part of the ocean in 23.2 minutes. Shit. What about the bottom of a river? It's not deep enough for his own oxygen to kill him. So that's a good start. Funnily enough, this was a tactic developed by the Germans in World War II for their super heavy tank called the Mouse. This tank weighed 188 tons and couldn't cross any bridges, so they were designed to submerge and drive across the river bottoms. The bad is that walking underwater is horribly slow. Due to the drag forces in water, walking speed is decreased to approximately one half to one third that of land walking speed for the same metabolic intensity. Not to mention the river bottom and sea bottom is silty and soft, so his speed would be even slower than that. Let's use the Nile River for this example. Could John walk to the other side of the Nile River on his compressed air supply? Well, the Nile River is about 26 to 36 feet deep and has an average width of 2.8 kilometers and can be up to 7.5 kilometers wide at points. River speed varies from 3.5 to 7 miles per hour, but due to the force of gravity of Master Chief, he isn't getting pushed around by measly 5 mile per hour currents, so this won't increase his overall distance he needs to cover. For your average human with an average working rate RMV of 40 times 1 bar or 30 
33 feet deep with 900 liters of oxygen, and they'll have about 22.5 minutes of air. For your average augmented super soldier with an average working rate RMB of 20 times one bar with 900 liters of free air, and he'll have about 45 minutes of air supply. Say Chief's walking underwater at the pace of five kilometers an hour, which is that of a normal human walking on land. He will make it to the other side of the Nile River in about half an hour. He will actually need less oxygen, though, since it is a gradual slope into the river and the lesser water pressure will increase his overall air consumption. So in conclusion, walking on the bottom of a river is actually a viable option. 90 minutes of compressed air actually seems kind of weak. Do other Spartan versions solve this? Are there any variants suited for maritime operations? Actually, yeah. The Mako-class Mjolnir variant of the Gen 2 armor. The description for this armor reads, This suit meets UNSC requirements for multi-environment adaptation and has additional systems that allow it to excel in maritime environments. Though offered as a complete Gen 2 Mjolnir system for the Spartan branch, adoption of the Mako helmet by Army combat divers has proven to be more profitable. That's all the information I could obtain on the Mako variant armor. The additional capabilities developed for this variant haven't been transferred to us yet. Since we are tasked with this project, let's just get started anyways. What could we implement into Spartan kits to help them with underwater operations with today's technology? Again, 90 minutes of air sucks for any real maritime operations. We do have a few modern options for this though. A rebreather. The main advantage of this over your scuba tanks is that rebreathers recycle air and don't produce lots of visible bubbles. Extra oxygen tanks. Pretty simple math here. Need more air? Carry more air. You can also carry an assorted gas mix like Trimix or Heliox for increased operating depths while avoiding nitrogen narcosis and oxygen toxicity. This is basically the best option. Then there's theoretical artificial gills. Extracting oxygen out of the seawater for indefinite underwater durations sounds pretty sick. Problem is, you need a huge, powerful system to accomplish the science needed to effectively do this. Maybe in 500 years, this would be a feasible option, but for now, not really. Now that oxygen isn't an issue, let's work on Chief actually moving through the water. Well, we already covered scuba buoyancy control devices, which would enable Spartans to maintain various levels of depth. This is helpful because underwater transportation won't have to combat his force of gravity. SDVs are manned submersibles used to deliver United States Navy SEALs and their equipment for special operation missions. The SDV has compressed air to extend the range of a swimmer's owned air tank or a rebreather. The SDV is also equipped with propulsion, navigation, communication, and life support equipment. They are often deployed from submarine torpedo tubes and can travel in shallow water. There are various versions such as the SEAL carrier, sub-SEAL, and torpedo SEAL. It would not be difficult to create a SDV designed specifically for Spartans, a Spartan delivery vehicle if you will. Diver propulsion device. The only change needed to make it Spartan compatible is to make it bigger and more powerful. Water pump jetpack. I don't really know how effective or reliable these would be in a Spartan package. It's said that they can make an average human swim about as fast as an Olympic swimmer. They look pretty sweet, so it's an honorable mention. But let's get real fucking serious here. The Hydro Bob is the pinnacle of badass war machines and is my pick for the Spartan delivery vehicle of choice. So, in conclusion, Spartan armor isn't generally designed or suited for water survivability or maritime operations. Based on the games, he dies instantly. In the cutscenes, he sinks, but doesn't die immediately. Our results indicate that he would die pretty quickly. But with our modern developments for the Mako-class Mjolnir armor system variant and our recommendations for current Spartan armor upgrades, Spartans will actually be effective combat divers. Hopefully you enjoy this project. As always, I'm incredibly interested in what you guys have to say about this. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm missing something? Do you think I'm a lunatic? Drop a comment. If you want more like this, hit the like button and subscribe. And also let me know what you want me to cover next. I'll see you next Saturday morning.